Hello everyone and a warm warm welcome to another episode of the What's Going On podcast. We're back again with another episode and today we are not in our original studio. We're actually doing a home setup here and uh, we have two guests with us and it's Martin and Magnus from Europa Point FC. Warm welcome. Thank you very much. Hello everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, hello. How are you doing? Yeah, we're doing fine. Uh, I mean, uh, we just uh, came back here from uh, Spain, uh, both of us, and uh, it's a little unusual, uh, but we brought uh, the good weather with us, so that's uh, fantastic. Yeah, exactly, because you, you live in Gibraltar, um, otherwise? Yeah, yeah, we play in Gibraltar, but we live outside in, the, in La Linea, a sp- Spanish Oh yeah, yeah, so there's city. a Spanish city right next to Gibraltar. Yes. Both of you are... Yes, mm. uh, I live in Marbella, mm. uh, just 40 minutes away from uh, La Lina, but uh, I'm often in La Lina. It's a very, very nice little town that mm. not too many know, know uh, have, have been to and know about. Mm. So it's a good little place. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. And uh, can you just briefly introduce yourself uh, to the listeners and like what your role is at Europa Point and also about like the project in general? I can start. Uh, my name is Martin Falkeborn. Uh, I'm a player of Europa Point FC and uh, actually I'm also the head of youth, take responsibility over the young players and the academy there. Uh, I'm running the academy and try to develop uh, the youngsters over club. Cool. Yeah, uh, and I'm uh, the the president, as it's called in Spain. That's nice to have the title <laughs> president. That's a cool wow. title. It's a cool uh, title. Not bad. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and um, I, I'm also part owner together with some of my uh, my co-investors, and we've been in the club now for for uh, the last couple of months. Uh, so it's quite new still, and uh, and uh, we're getting into our first season coming up, uh, starting in October. But it's been it's been a good half year. Cool, cool. And uh, Martin, um, since you're still playing professionally, can you tell us a little bit about your career before you moved to Gibraltar and why you decided to choose Europa Point uh, after spending your whole career in Sweden and Norway uh, before moving to Europa Uh, Point? Oh, it's a long career. Now I'm 30 years old, but maybe I'm looking like 20. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, uh, I grew up and started to play in uh, Bromma Pojkana, the youth academy there, and uh, going through the whole academy up to the senior squad. Uh, playing Roma Pojkina center team for like two years, I think, uh, three years, uh, both in Superettan, the second uh, second league in Sweden, and Allsvenskan, the highest league, and act- actually also in uh, Europa League, uh, when wow. we get a fair play spot. And oh, really? Worse. Yeah, oh. and uh, we play against the uh, Italian side Torino. Uh, but we don't talk so much about that game because we <laughs> lost, cool players to lost face 4-0, though. I think we lost, yeah. Uh, yeah so. But it was a great experience for me because I was only 20 years old. Uh, and then I have been in Norway, in Lillestrøm, in the highest league, Tip mm. Ligan, and uh, actually in Stavanger, Egesund, it's called. A nice yeah. little bit town in uh, Stavanger in Norway. Uh, and then I have been in a couple of... Uh, clubs in Superettan, Iko mm. Frey, Surianska, Kropolis. And then for two years ago, I come back to IF Bromma Pojkarna, uh, to Division 1. And then we go up to the highest league, to the Allsvenskan in two years. Uh, but then I decide to move to this man and his project in Gibraltar, mm. Europa Point FC. And uh, yeah, uh, it was an interesting project uh, for me also. I'm 30 years old. I want to do something in the end of my career mm. uh, and I get a big role uh, to play and that also have a re- responsibility over the youth academy uh, so it was a quite uh, yeah uh, how to say it was a quite good experience for me also to move down to Gibraltar and Spain and uh, start this project uh, together with Magnus uh, so yeah, yeah that's a little bit of my career yeah interesting um, would you say the chance of playing European football did that contribute as well as, you know, your background as a coach and BP as well? Yeah. Was that also a contributing factor to be able to lead the academy? Exactly. And uh, also to take, uh, I've been in Bromma Pokernas Academy as a coach also mm-hmm. for like eight to ten years. And I want to take this. Ah, This is the, I think for me, it's like the best academy in Europe, uh, Bromma Pokernas. Mm-hmm. And I want to take these uh, things from Bromma Pokernas down to Gibraltar also. Uh, but it's a... 
huge step from mm. Gibraltar Youth Academy here in the youth players and everything because they're not used to train much uh, to have a, like a military or how to say like yeah true true like a, yeah good uh, training sessions all the time and train maybe four to five times per week uh, but for them it's more like to have fun and of course it should be fun but also mm. like to develop the players who we yeah. want to have in the center team for the in the future uh, but it's going to take a little bit of time, but it's a progress. Uh, so we take step by step, like mm. we say in Sweden. Cool, cool. And Magnus, um, you were working as an agent previously and project leader and marketer uh, within the sports <coughs> industry for many, many years. Uh, but can you tell us a little bit more about your career before uh, getting involved in Europa Point FC and what you've done? Yeah, before? yeah. Well, I'm, if, if Martin is 30, then, then I'm 60. So <laughs> uh, I have, uh, like, it's going to take twice as long time to explain here. Uh, but uh, no, I started in the sport industry after my university very mm. early on. I got into the sport industry and I was working with sponsorship and also board advertising, this kind of classic sales around the arenas. Mm. Um, and then I moved on into market research. Uh, so I was working with market research uh, for a long, long time, almost uh, 12 years. And during that time, I grew a company called Escom uh, Research. And we became at the uh, year 2000, we were the largest sport research company in the world oh, at cool. the time. And um, I'm very happy about that. So we worked together with FIFA, UEFA and all the international tournaments. Uh, so I got a very good network by traveling around for almost 10 years international uh, to deliver reports. And I, I, I remember once I got to Brazil, I had an agent there helping me and uh, it was a very nice lady. And she brought me to Flamengos, Corinthians, uh, Vasco da Gama. And wow. I, I was meeting wow. the board. I was in the papers. Everything was fantastic <laughs> over there. So I, 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 I worked a lot on, on, let's say, the industrial side. Uh, but during the time I, I grew up my daughters and they were actually playing in Broma Poikana, both of them, two daughters. Okay. So evening time when I was home, mm. I was in Broma Poikana and helping my daughters to develop as football players. And so I, 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 I let's say, I worked daytime in the sport industry and in the evening time I was a coach. So um, I've been, been coaching a lot of football as well. So uh, working with FIFA, UEFA, different clubs, uh, playing football or, and, and as well, coaching football. So football has been part of my life a long time. And then um, I moved home around 2003. Uh, and and uh, uh, Sweden is a very small sport market. It mm. actually doesn't have a sport market, I would say. Really? Um, mm. and, and just as a comparative uh, point, uh, if you look in London, there is one lawyer office who have around 300 practicing lawyers in football. Uh, wow, that's crazy. Uh, that's crazy. And in Sweden, we have two companies with one guy each. Wow. Uh, so that's the dimension <laughs> we talked about. Uh, and, and then, of course, the big sport market, if you look on a global scale, we talk about US, we talk about Germany, we talk about England, we talk about Australia, those kind of big countries in sport. So uh, that, that's, that's my overall looking on the industry. Uh, but then, uh, fortunate enough, I was uh, working with Bromma Porkana as, as the marketing director when we went up to Allsvenskan, yeah. 7 and 8. And, and then I connected with some of the players like Olof Gutterstam and Mikael Almebeck and Christy Josef and those guys. And they, I helped them as an advisor because I was 20 years older than them were at the time. So, so uh, and then... Um, I, I uh, was fortunate enough to run into Mr. Sven Goran Eriksson, 2010. I have a quite funny story about that, how we, we, we got together. And then uh, we, we've been working for a long time. I helped him in China. I helped him in, in, uh, in, in uh, uh, Thailand and a couple other countries. So I've been traveling with him a lot, helping him to develop the book that mm. he launched 2013. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, me and Sven worked on that project. Mm. Uh, so. Uh, and then at the one point, someone said, or maybe it was Sven who said, you know, why don't you buy a football club and continue to work? So that's how it grew, the idea. And then uh, it, it, it came to me that during these 30 years in the industry, mm. I've been offered three different clubs uh, to, to purchase. Mm, okay. And of course, the money is, is quite heavy. And if you look into, for example, to go in to try to buy Swansea or, or Hull or some of those clubs right. in championship, you talk a lot of money. Um, but then this Gibraltar project came up 
and that is a, is is another figure compared to UK or or Germany or whatever you want to go. So that's uh, when I start to look into it together with a couple other investors. We saw this is very interesting, so we jumped on board on on this Europa Point FC. Cool, cool. And uh, where would you say the project stands today, and like the goals for the upcoming season, and also the long term ambitions yeah, uh, with yeah. Europa Point FC? Yeah, just just seeing the overall picture as as a club. The club is in in phase one. Mm. If we go from a step from one to ten, yeah, uh, and and we are in in the construction of the organization. We are in the construction of getting the right coach team. Mm. We are in the construction of building the the key players. And I would say Martin is our first signing that I feel <laughs> very comfortable about. Uh, yeah. That is a strategic. Because he has more assets than just an ordinary player, uh, he, he, as he mentioned, he's taking care of of the youth section, helping us to develop uh, the quality of, of, mm. of the youth coaches that has quite poor background, and he also helping the kids to understand that they need to be extra motivated if they want to become a good footballer, or if they're there just to have fun and play. You know, have to divide it maybe in those two categories. Mm. So and then uh, he, he's a good footballer still, and, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, I, I think also, uh, for example, Martin is is gonna show even uh, more presence next season because uh, the last game he was so much on fire that uh, <laughs> that uh, I think he's gonna carry that with him to the next 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 season. So the club is is mm. just in a very early stage of development. Okay, and you mentioned you know you guys had the chance to buy some clubs in England, for example. Well, what was it about Gibraltar specifically that stood out, other than the fact that you know it was a little bit cheaper um, yeah, compared to I, buying yeah, a I, championship I, club? I, I I can try to do a quick analysis of uh, why we bought in Gibraltar compared to buying a club in Championship or uh, another league. Uh, the first of all, when you start to look on buying a club, the first thing you do. Is try to look on the finance uh, and in the finance you try to see where are the heavy costs and normally a heavy cost is a stadia mm. because there's no stadia running very profitable it's a few american uh, know how uh, that know how to run uh, uh, an efficient uh, stadia mm. and the reason is that um, 365 days you have 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 a stadia and it's like a flying plane you know you have to fill the seats yeah and if you look on, for example, what we have here in Sweden in Tele2, there's a couple of days, nothing happens. And that's a loss revenue, mm -hmm. loss money. So when you start to look on clubs, you start to look on, okay, how much cost and what is the risk of owning or being part of a stadia project? Mm -hmm. So in Sweden, we have the advantage sometimes that the, the commune or the state or the, the city owns the stadia because then they can take some of that mm -hmm. cost. And that is very normal. Uh, but otherwise, you, you own your own stadia. Then you need to be creative. You have to have an organization. Mm. I think Malmö, right? They own their own stadia. Yeah, so, exactly. So mm. they have a risk every day. They lose money if they don't fill up the seats. Mm. So they have a higher risk of, of winning money, but also a higher risk of losing money. Yeah. So that's the first point. Uh, if we look on, on the clubs in UK, then you see there's a lot of depth. There's a lot of, of, of bad depth in those clubs. And that is a high risk. And mm. there's no smart Swedish investors <laughs> who wants to take that risk because it's also uh, by generation, the depth can be owned by the third owner or the fourth owner, or the fifth owner. You don't know really uh, who, who created the debt is a mess. Oh and yeah, true, true. It's yeah. a big mess. You need to work hard to find, you know, the solution there. Mm -hmm. And then you take over the burden and going to run that risk. The worst is also when you come to a club is that normally in a big club, a good club, there is 30 good players. Those 30 good players have 30 different contracts. No one is looking the same. There's mm. a bonus there, it's a bonus yeah, there, it's a clauses. sign off there, and it's, it's, yeah, it's just yeah. a mess. Mm. And they sometimes they have an agent. You talk about 30 agents you need to deal with. 
no that's a lot of work mm. it's yeah. a lot of risk yeah. yeah so now you have two points you don't want to take care of right the stadia mm. and all the agents and the bad contracts yeah. yeah it's a big risk so those are the main two points you look at and then then you have to say okay what's our ambition yeah let's say we want to try to win the league we need to put in even more money compared to the risk of the stadia and also the contracts we need to have new players so that's a new budget right mm. so now we start to get a little risky a lot of business here all money yeah uh, i can go on on 12 points more <laughs> but i'm not going to do that <laughs> so here we go okay gibraltar what's the advantage on on your question is that on gibraltar we don't have any any risk on the stadia why because the gfa gibraltar federation is actually running the league it's not like in sweden for example mm. um, so the gfa is taking care of the cost of the stadia they take cost of the referees they take cost of, of the equipment so there's no cost to play a game mm. zero wow that's good mm. that's quite unique also i Very can, I can imagine and, yeah. and like everyone shares the same stadium as well right? and we share the same stadia mm. uh, so it's, it's like you play home and away on the same same time right <laughs> <laughs> and um so there's no cost on the stadia that is very very good yeah uh, then since the league is is on a, under development also we talk about that the the, the contracts are fairly paid uh, not too much not too little but it's not long term like four years like in Turkey. No, there are short term contracts, one, two years. So you are flexible as an owner to see how you can manage the cash flow. And they're very much looking alike with the same kind of payment structure. There's no stars in, in the wow. league. No <laughs> stars? <laughs> not yet, not yet. Uh, no big stars. Uh, <laughs> uh, so that is also con you, you, you control the cost and the assets of that. So that's two points of, of, of the one we talked about. Um, but on the other hand, you don't have any, any supporters. Uh, mm -hmm. You have no, no failed stadiums. You have no ticket sales. You have no merchandise sales. Mm -hmm. So that is in comparison to that you don't take the cost of, of running uh, the stadia or the pitch mm. or the referees you don't have any income on that so but you have to mm, yeah. have to check that out mm. so there is a couple of advantages so that's when we compare to okay let's say can we try to buy a league one club in uk mm. and you buy in gibraltar which is pretty similar the price range oh, yeah? mm. then you start to feel like oh we have less risk mm. we have less work uh, less operating costs operating costs in gibraltar compared to league one mm. you have no fans that is good because today there's a lot of pressure right uh, <laughs> yeah, so we can, we can work uh, in in calm uh, mm. we, we we don't really have to stress mm. if you buy a championship or a league one club you have thousands of fans are expecting the Swedish investors to do a lot of things, right? Even put in more money to buy some stars. Yes, yeah, like pressure from day it's one. It's a lot of pressure from day one. Yeah. So here we can work towards our goal. I think that suits the Swedish mentality. Martin said step by step. I mean, that's the method. We do something, we do it good, and then we take next step and then next step and so on. So in 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 a, in in longer discussion we see there's more advantages to go into a gibraltar league compared to uh, other uh, possible investments okay nice mm -hmm. that's mm. a long one but yeah, no, yeah it's it's super, super interesting yeah, yeah. fascinating and maybe also the sport to go to yeah thank you martin i forgot that and that that is of course mm. also not only the money you no no no, no. Good, good, good 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 no, I was just going to say it. I forgot it, actually. But it's, it's, of course, a high reward compared also. Because if you go into Championship or League One, then it, it's a long run to go up to Champions League qualifying or Conference League qualifying, Euro League qualifying. But in this case, as Martin has thought about here, it's the high reward. We are very close. We're 11 teams mm. competing about three spots to play in Euro League games, mm. either Championships League uh, qualifying, uh, Euro League qualifying, 
or uh, conference league qualifying. Ah. So we're 11 of, of uh, three of 11. Mm. So that's a high reward compared uh, high. To, to low mm. risk. So that that's the mm. balance. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So, so is it like the first place team gets Champions League qualification, second Europa, and then Conference League? Correct. Mm. And then we have the cup winner also. Um, last one. year it was four spots okay. of 11, but they took away one. Took so away. if you won the Rock Cup, uh, the, oh, cup, yeah, the, the in, cup, yeah. Yeah, National, national Cup. National yeah, cup. yeah. 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 Okay. But, but mm. there's still only three to be uh, handed out at the moment. Okay, yeah. cool. Okay. And yeah, me and Jacob, a couple of weeks ago, we watched a video on YouTube. It was like a... It was some American investor who'd bought a club called uh, Manchester 62 and he'd evolved some YouTuber as director of football. Um, and we're wondering in general, how does the ownership landscape look in Gibraltar in, in general? Are most clubs kind of owned yeah, like the way Europa Point FC is or? Um, like... Of the 11, I, I don't know all of them yet. Mm. We've been on a meeting together, but sometimes you send a club secretary and sometimes the owners are there and you, you don't really know who is who. but. As long as far as I know right now, we talk about the American uh, mm. man, uh, Michael, who owns Manchester 62. He came in also at the same time as we did in the mm. fall of 2022. Mm. Um, he bought Manchester 62 and uh, doing a good job. He also owns a, a USL team in, uh, in Pittsburgh uh, mm. also. Uh, so so his, his take is, you know, the American way into Gibraltar and trying to build a bridge that way. Mm. Uh, then there is also a former uh, Watford owner, uh, Haig, uh, okay. who owns one club. Um, the, he he owned it owned Watford together with Elton John, so that's one of the owners. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, there is a Mexican guy who owns a club. He he lives in Florida, so he's doing it on remote control. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I never like, seen him. like the Man United owners. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, the rest, I think there is a rumor that one more club got bought this, this just recently. Mm -hmm. um, but we haven't seen any papers on that yet. But uh, otherwise, there's local uh, strong uh, entrepreneurs and businessmen who owns mm -hmm. it uh, locally. So I would say only four at the moment are foreign owned and the rest of the 11 is owned uh, by uh, local business uh, people. Okay, okay, cool. Cool. Um, yeah, and uh, going to talk a little bit about the Academy now. Um, Martin, you're responsible for, for, for that project. Um, and can you tell us a little bit more, like, how you want the Academy to look like in a few years? Is it focusing on developing players from Gibraltar? Or is it a focus to, like, take talents from, like, Spain, Portugal, Sweden, or a mix from all around the world? Uh, would you say? I mean, for the first in the Academy now in Europa Point, we have around... Oh, 70 to 80 players I think and um, oh, we only have from under 14 down to under 8 uh, so we need to progress the players like to take in more players to develop from under 23 down all the way down to under 8 mm. uh, for the first we want to take care of the kids from Gibraltar uh, and of course if players from Spain and also Morocco is close to come yeah, to the academy they are welcome but uh, the first main thing is uh, actually from the Gibraltar and we have uh, when I go into the pitches in Gibraltar uh, everyone play football right now yeah, it's so, a football uh, culture in the country exactly yeah. and the culture we want to take care of the kids for first we want to develop the players uh, actually like the footballers but also to p good people uh, and we actually now for like uh, two, three months ago, I do uh, like a document mm. who need to be focused on the old people from Europa Point FC, how to become a good footballer, how to become a good people. And mm. f from that, we need to grow as a, as a youth academy. And right now we have uh, actually like to... 20 to 30 players who want to come actually to our academy uh, right oh, that's now. Cool. And, uh, when we come, me and Magnus, to Europa Point, the reputation of the youth was not good. Uh, we have bad, not bad, but not educated trainers, not mm. the players who just come there and have fun. Of course, we want to have fun, but we need to become footballers. And this is why we have football clubs, uh, to become a good player yeah, uh, sure. in the future. And right now, we will focus on that, to have a little bit more, how to say, seriously, uh, focus on the eyes on the footballer not only like to have fun but uh, 
so we need to have progress uh, to ah, to develop the players and for the first when I when we come it was only training one to two times per week mm. now we want to progress that to have four times per week from from the start from under 14 up to under 23 uh, and yeah to develop the players basically in the techniques uh, shooting passes everything uh, mm. who yeah yeah, yeah, that will improve them hugely to like double the amount of training. That exactly. That's a, that's a good start, I think. Because in Bromo Pokémon, when I grow up, and also maybe you also know about this, and mine is also, uh, I sh come to Bromo Pokémon when I was around 10, 11 years old. I come from a small club, Ekerö IK. We train maybe two times per week. Uh, but when I come to Bromo Pokémon, we train four to five times per week. Uh, and uh, I can just talk about myself, uh, Bromo Pokémon's academy, like we have very good trainers, educated trainers. We know how to train good. And this is why we need to come to the Europa point now. Uh, mm -hmm. And this comes from the trainers. So my main position now to be a head of youth in Europa point FC to educate the trainers and the trainers with educated players. Mm -hmm. So we need to have very good trainers. And uh, now we are in progress to re recruitment new trainers. And yeah, we will see how it works in the future. But hopefully it's going to be a good future for Europa Point FC for the academy. Sounds really interesting. Yeah. Good, and I want to say also one more thing about mm. the academy. Now our under-14 is going to go to a cup uh, in Gothenburg. Oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah. I saw that. Nice. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. That's really cool. And um, this is the first team ever from Gibraltar who go into Gothenburg to go to cup. Okay. So that's a huge uh, experience for the kids and also for the for whole Gibraltar, uh, the whole Gibraltar people yeah uh, super good also like pr wise i can imagine like in the country and also like mm. in sweden also to build like the pr uh, brand more yeah. awareness yeah exactly yeah. so uh, that's quite cool and uh maybe you have played good a couple yeah, before i played there yeah. Yeah. yeah it was fun yeah i loved it yeah. like uh, such a fun experience honestly <laughs> not yeah. only the football the environment yeah. Uh, yeah. all around like you meet uh, african teams south america everything yeah, yeah it, it feels, feels like like the world cup, cup for youths youth, but yeah. with club teams. It, it is the biggest youth tournament in the world right? exactly yeah, yeah. And, uh, so that's Absolutely. going to be a good experience for our under 14. I'm, I'm still angry with my coach when i was young he they, they never let us go to go to your cup i'm still angry with <laughs> okay yeah. if you listen to this i'm still angry with you <laughs> <laughs> what is name Åke. 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 Åke from Eskilstuna. <laughs> um but yeah you guys you had a tryout here in early may um how did that one go and why did you decide to have it here? Uh, actually, yeah, it was last week we had a tryout week mm. and uh, it was played from the whole Europe, from Ukraine, Poland, England and Sweden also, of course. Wow. Uh, and some of them also actually from Gibraltar come the whole way to Sweden. Uh, no, it was a good week. We have around, uh, I think it was 20 players mm. uh, training every day for three hours and then we have a game also against Broma Pokémon under 19 uh, and it was a good week good educated players and we decide to oh we haven't yet decided to 100% but we are interested in one to three players and actually it was one of them was very good and I cannot say the names but uh, I really like one of them I had a responsibility over one week and then Magnus and our scouts Mike Gudetti, maybe oh, you know him. John yeah. uh, Gudetti's father. Exactly, you were yeah. an Oiko fan, so yeah, you exactly. know about that. <laughs> and then we have Anders Limpar. Uh, oh yeah, the former Arsenal and Everton midfielder, and also national team. Exactly. Yeah. And they were there and looking together with Magnus and me. And so, yeah, we are interesting in some of the players. Super cool. And, and to someone who listens to this, that maybe like plays football and so on, how would you guys like sell in the opportunity to come and play uh, play football as a young footballer in in Gibraltar. Yeah, I mean the money. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 the cash flow. No, 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 not the money. We, uh, we um, I think, like Martin described this week, uh, I think uh, we are the only team at the moment doing what we call open tryout. And that is not a new concept. It's a concept that they do in the US. Uh, everyone gets what we call a second chance to be a good footballer. Um, because some, some players, they maybe had some troubles in their family when they were between 18 and 20. Uh, they had maybe a bad injury between you know, 16 to 20 or something. And they came off the, the track. 
Um, and then uh, when you're 21, 20, you start to realize, oh, I still want to try. I really want to go hard. And if you have the right mentality, you can still do it. You start to get a little late when you're 25. But, but we still believe that there is good talent out there between 18 and 25. And, and we give them the opportunity to come to one of these tryouts. Uh, we do them every January and we do them every August. Uh, mm. So uh, if anyone listening and think uh, they will be still a, fo- a good footballer, they have the chance to go to Europa Point and just check out our social media, Instagram and Facebook, where we post and say, uh, this is the date, this is the opportunity. So uh, we, we believe that you can always give someone a second chance. And uh, I think we feel a little alone in, about this uh, thought. Uh, if you look on the big clubs, do they give anyone an open tryout? Never. No. no. Uh, <laughs> so this is a concept that we like. And like Martin said, we found three people that we're going to invite down to, to be with the first team in August and see if they, how they look in that competition. And if they still face uh, and, and look good in that competition, we're going to offer them a contract and of the three. So uh, that, that uh, is, is uh, always an opportunity with us, actually. Yeah. And uh, like, can you tell us a little bit about the lifestyle? Because I'm like curious if it feels like a dream to like go down and like south of Spain, live there, warm every day <laughs> and play football there. I think Martin knows more than, than me about La Lina and, and Gibraltar. For the first like to, as a footballer, I can speak for my first thing. It's like to come down there to the environment, to the sun, to the hot, you know, not to have like... 10 kilo of clothes on you in the preseason in the snowstorm outside here yeah. Yeah. to run uh, and run and run and run. But uh, yeah, actually the life there is amazing. Uh, I live in a little bit town called La Linea. It's uh, the border town to Gibraltar. To go out there to speak to everyone, they're very social, everyone, everyone is out, take coffee, maybe some of them take cerveza also. <laughs> not me, not me. <laughs> no, but the life there is quite chill. Like you go, go up, eat breakfast outside in a restaurant, speak to the, the people who live there. Uh, cost one euro for one coffee, not five euro here, like here in Sweden, mm, yeah. inflation. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and go and train on the afternoon to the with, at the stadium, the national stadium of Gibraltar. It's quite cool to train on the national stadium, like uh, super cool. Yeah, to train there and uh, yeah, the good life. It's a good life there. Restaurants, bars, everything is amazing. I should say. Yeah, sounds um, really cool. Yeah. Would you say like it is kind of in Spain, but mm. obviously there's massive you know British influence. Would you say it feels more like you're in the UK or in Spain when you're in Gibraltar? When we're in Gibraltar, it feels like more like UK. It's fish and chips everywhere, and uh, <laughs> pints, and, uh, <laughs> and the pe- everyone speak mostly English there. Uh, mm. But then we Swedish players live in Spain, and then you have the both sides of it. Mm. You have the Spanish culture, and you have the British culture. Yeah, uh, and it's quite amazing to have the both, I like to say. Mm. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah, Martin, talking about like the lifestyle down in Spain, it sounds amazing. But um, I'm just wondering, is it like a, um, is it a lot of players and like agents who, who contact the club and are interested to to join Europa Point, or or how does it look on that point today? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, from the first, I played in Superettan and Allsvenskan in many years, so I have a lot of friends or teammates or opponents who contact me direct through Instagram or WhatsApp or every, ah, every social media and every, my number. I can just say it's like 50 to 100 players from Superettan oh, wow. and Allsvenskan. Wow, and also, that many? Damn. Yeah, it's crazy. And also like agents who contact me direct and maybe you also. So it's a huge interesting from Sweden and also abroad from America, from South America, from Africa also, like two or three agents from Africa who contact me direct. So it's quite, and now it's our mission also to ah, see which players we need to the squad yeah. and see which type of players we need um, and yeah, take this right players to the squad. Yeah, interesting, interesting to like add those type of contacts maybe to build. A squad that can be uh, super interesting to see it. Yeah, and just comment on that. I'm I'm happy to hear because Martin uh, gets all this. I think at the moment we have 
uh, three uh, that play in Allsvenskan today that has contacted us and wants to come already in the summer. Oh, okay. Uh, Current break, Allsvenskan yeah, players. even break their contracts. So okay. uh, it's very interesting. And actually we have a meeting tomorrow with one of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, interesting, yeah. interesting. Them. So yeah, make sure to to follow the Rupa point to see if, <laughs> <laughs> who it might be. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, interesting. And yeah, Martin, you're obviously still playing in the league. Oh. How do you compare the level compared to what you're used to in Norway and Sweden? Now, for the first when I come, I think this should be very easy. Actually, I think the, not very easy, but I think the level in Gibraltar was not so high that I expected to see now. Uh, when I see the top teams like Lincoln, Brunos and Europa FC, it's like Allsvenskan Superettan level. Uh, mm. And then the lower part of the league is maybe around Division 1. Uh, but it's like more physical football there. It's, it's more tough games and more physically like long balls and stuff like that. But actually the top teams play really good football. More like yeah, Spanish football, like on the grass always. and. Uh, good individuals like good skillings uh, and no, good skills sorry my english is not the best yet now but it's come <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, it's a good level and uh, like i when i when we have young players like from Roma Pokina to come to the seniors senior teams here in Gibraltar they feels like that also you have Christopher Krebs here maybe he's tell you about this that it's more physical mm. uh, he meet he, or he did not uh, or he did not. No, oh, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so if I compare the levels, the top teams are, yeah, they are good. They are like Allsvenskan. Super Allsvenskan uh, yeah. Maybe not the top eight in Allsvenskan, but uh, under eight to 14, yeah. 16, uh, I should compare. And, and how would you say, does it feel like possible to like reach that level um, in, in, in the quite like present future? Would you say, or or do you find it challenging to catch up with those teams? Are they far, way far ahead, or how would you like describe the level of the game from those those clubs? When we arrived there, 20th of January, I had been one and a half month in Thailand, have vacation, and the other Swedish guys, four of them, have preseason. Uh, we play against number two in the league, Bronos, in the cup, and we only lost with one zero. So I think this is a good opportunity in the future to like be top six, top three, and go to Europe. Uh, otherwise, I should not be here. Oh, yeah, in that's Gibraltar. true. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Yeah. And they're talking about because it's not only you, Martin. You have how many other Swedes did you have playing for you last season? How many were they? It's four more, huh? I think. Yeah, yeah because I, I read somewhere that Magnus that you mentioned like that you wanted to be out of Svenskan's seventeenth team. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about what you meant? And is it like a um, is it a wish for you to have like a lot of Swedish players um, in yeah. Europa Point? Yeah, I, uh, I'm, we're fortunate that it was not uh, me who, who created the, the title uh, Allsvenskan's 17th uh, team. It was actually was a, a good journalist in, in, on some <laughs> big uh, football uh, site um, <laughs> that um, created that. And uh, we're happy about it. We like that position. And I think it's... Um, Pretty much that if you played Allsvenskan like Martin has and uh, you start to feel that you want to change environment and don't run in the snow and, and have a ordinary preseason that you've done maybe seven, eight times already in the same club and you want some, some sun beaches and you want to have, have a little different environment, then, then you can move to Europa Point. And, and because we have the, like Martin said, the quality is there. Uh, it's a challenge. It's a different style of football. Uh, what I enjoy to watch is that um, it goes up and down. In, in, it's like, no, don't do that. Or, or yes, that, that was fantastic. It's like very dramatic football. Mm -hmm. It's like in the old days, 70s, 80s, in the, when you watch Tips Extra in the, the old days, it's like old, old football. It's, it's, yeah. it's quite, quite interesting. And then, as Martin said, there's a couple of teams who have Spanish coach and Spanish players. And on your question, we are trying to integrate uh, Allsvenskan 70 team. It will be, we, we mainly will source players from Scandinavia. Uh, that will be the backbone together with these four or five uh, Gib, as we call them, the Gib players. Uh, so our our structure will be Scandinavian players together with Gib players. If you look on the other teams, they have Spanish players, Spanish coach with Gib players. Uh, okay. or, or they have a UK coach with UK players and Gib players. Uh, 
So we, we will be we will be uh, the n- n- northern Europe mm. style. But also we had last year a very good Polish guy. Uh, I, they they start to get a couple of nice uh, good players from uh, the Baltic states. Mm. So I, I consider that to be also part of northern Europe. And that of course is we need a coach who who also can transform this kind of style or thinking into um, into the pitch. And, and we're talking at the moment to three different coaches uh, that are Swedish, by the way. So okay. our season that starts in October or preseason starts in August, uh, we will have a coach who probably has been in Allsvenskan. So once again, oh. Allsvenskan 70 team. Mm. He's been... Wow, that's a cliffhanger. <laughs> it is, it is, it is. Dropping a bomb. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. Don't say yeah. too much. Yeah, <laughs> no, I can't say too much. But as all three of them we talked to, uh, have been um, all three right have yeah. been in Alsvenskan as a coach okay so uh, that there yeah. will, will be someone with Alsvenskan experience mm-hmm. so once again yes we're trying to find maybe the super etan uh, players who wants to go outside we cannot compete salary wise at the moment mm. with uh, the Alsvenskan because it's it's also growing i think we're yeah. on a 100,000 mark at the moment swedish kronas or yeah. 10,000 euro mark on 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 that level we, we're not there yet we're yeah. more on the super etta level where we can pay the salaries around that's that size okay okay yeah. all right and of course you've mentioned you want a scandinavian backbone in the team but i think the rules in gibraltar is that you need five you know gibbs as you say on the pitch at the same time and considering the population of gibraltar of thirty thousand people mm. um, of course the talent pool is naturally mm. quite small how much of a challenge would you say that is um, that 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 is a nutcracker, um, and that's for everyone, uh, for mm. every team. It's that you try to find uh, the best uh, Gibraltarian player that you can get. When we started last season, uh, we heritage the coach, uh, who is a good coach, is uh, is a, a local uh, guy, Gary. And then we had a couple of good players, but we also had some players who had not been training enough or came to the preseason unprepared and so on. So we, we kind of started out that we, we knew we were going to be the bottom six and we also came bottom six. So that was not any other expectations from anyone, the coach, the players, the owners or anything. Now this season coming up, we, we reload the gun and we, we, we're going to put expectations on ourselves, on the players, on the coach and everything. So this for us is the first season. And then we need to get some good gibs. We need to get and, and we already got one, which is our new goalkeeper. He's called Adam Stevens. He comes from UK, educated UK. He played last year for another team and we were fortunate to sign him very early on. And he's going to be Gibraltarian because he's transforming from being British which mm. you can do after two, three years, you can become Gibraltarian if you have a British passport. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. So he is a very strategic player once again. So now we have two, Martin and the goalkeeper, because he's uh, Gibraltarian, and then we only need probably three more, or even four or three more on the pitch that are local. And we're already in talks with three, four more at the moment as we speak. So it's very crucial. So if you get a decent squad of uh, the Gibraltarians, then you can compensate to win by the, by the foreigners. If you have too low level of the Gibraltarians, then it's harder to mm-hmm. compensate. Yeah, yeah, you can imagine that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a nutcracker. Yeah. yeah. And uh, as, as you mentioned uh, earlier, that like on a level from one to 10, the club was like on one when you came. Um, and uh, what, what steps have you, what, what did you start with and uh, what did you like take um, as a first priority to perform, uh, to make more professional um, as a club? Where, where did you guys like start coming, well, coming to Kribelta? Um, point? Well, I, I came first, so maybe Martin can talk about what, what we did with the youth uh, or he did with the youth. But when I came in the fall uh, and you, you, you come to a new country, you come to a new environment, you come with a team of 20 players, you have a new coach, uh, you have no office, and there, there's a lot of things that's new, what to do, like you said, what's the first step you do? I don't know what other people would do, but but I thought we start to, to build the culture of the club, mm. which I think is at the end, the winning, winning uh, asset. Uh, so 
when I came is a rundown club in, in one way because it's not been taken care of all different aspects. So I thought let's start with a, try to get a new culture. And the culture was more that we work as a team. It, it sounds silly for us, especially here in Sweden, but, but it was a lot of individuals, uh, even on the, on the organization outside. So we needed to, to, to trans to form it into like we are a club, we are a team, we, we work together, we are an organization, we, we have something in common, we, we believe in something together. That was just the start uh, of, of building what I believe a, a, a good club. So, for example, we started to do a kickoff and uh, where we brought all the club together to see each other as people. And no one had done that in the club, uh, and the club is only ten years old, though. Mm. Uh, so, but no one had brought. So you can see, oh, we are like three hundred people in the club because you have parents, yeah. you have the seventy, eighty kids, you have oh, around the, the mm. first team, the second team, and we put the first team on stage, and 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 they got to train. Like Martin said, we want to develop also everyone mm. to be better people, and and know more about life. And and we had some young players coming up on stage and had to present themselves in the microphone for the first time like <laughs> hi i'm 18 years old <laughs> and, and so on so uh, it, it was a good session but that was to start to see if we are a larger club than just one person mm. so that was the first thing we did actually Super cool. mm. um and also i read something that you that you have some plans to start like a women's team a, a senior women team is that like a project that is gonna take place soon or is that more like a longer long-term project we've we've been uh, actually applying to start a women's team uh, and what i mean by that is we've been making an official request to say we want to start a women's team and we did that actually already in the fall of 2022 but then the gfa said hey, hold on a minute uh, gfa is the gibraltar federation association uh, the football federation they said hold on please because at the moment the recruitment process on gibraltar because it's only 30 40 000 people mm. uh, it's not enough women that can play uh, on the island oh, true. Yeah. so uh, at the moment there's too few girls who play football and they don't want to import a lot of um, uh, <laughs> good footballers because that's that's another race. Is 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 another uh, competition because then you need to pay a lot of foreigners to come, and then that takes yeah, away uh, the possibility for the youngs because they're not good enough. So mm. at the moment, all the girls in Gibraltar who likes football, they're part of the GFA football program, which is part of the youth program. So it's a long way to go, um, and. Um, so we actually, they said to us, uh, in the future, you can start a women's team, but uh, at the moment, we don't want you to recruit any other players, the women players from, from other teams. So you have to hold your horse here a little bit and wait. So it needs to fill up mm. with young girls who come up to 16. Mm -hmm. And then the more girls who enroll the football program, the more team can start. And then we have mm -hmm. to wait for our turn. Or what would you say the time frame is on that? Like oh well, I mean, um, I hope to start not this season, but this next season coming up. But I know some other teams also want to start women football, and maybe they are in, before us in line as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I came up with one question. I I don't know if it was you that um, uh, established this like. Uh, uh, slogan of the club, but it's called a, a pro progressive club. Can you tell us a little bit about like what that slogan means for you for you guys that are like running the club? Yeah, uh, well, it's actually a heritage from the previous owner. Uh, okay, uh, his name was Andy. So Andy invented that, and um, when when we sat down with some of our advertising or PR people or whatever they called, they we we just said you know it's it's good. It's good. Let's keep it. And but I, I, I we feel like, uh, and Martin can probably uh, fill in a blank here. But we feel like we are progressing in every step because we start from a blank sheet and we are on phase one. So everything has to be progressed. We need to progress. Uh, and I just can say I think we do. And I, I hand over to Martin about that question. Yeah, and as also well. the culture, like we continue as Martin say that the culture of, about to feel the club like this is our club and uh, 
from the youth like they have never before have a meeting with the parents they have never like trained together with the, all the like a club day that they meet uh, under 14 to under 9 and under 8 that they're meeting together uh, we need to have this culture like we are a family we are Europa point we should be together all the time it's like Mangan say that it's very much individuality in Gibraltar so the first thing when we took over, like we have an open day, like the whole teams meeting together yeah. and uh, like to have a quick chat with the parents. Like, what do you think about the youth? What we can improve and have a conversation with the parents, like an open mind, like mm. usually for us in Sweden, but in Gibraltar, they, what is, we're going to have a uh, parents meeting. What is that? Mm. Like they have never had it before. Oh. So that's like, I think the parents also from the youth and all the players like, feel that everyone is welcome more now to Europa Point and that we're going to go to a cup uh, is a huge step for all the the youth uh, because they've never been outside the Gibraltar before. They say, oh, the trainers who was responsible to, to book the flight ticket say, how I book a flight ticket? And how are we coming to Gothenburg? How, what are we going to do? Like, yeah, <laughs> they've yeah. never organized like this type of uh, things like no. trips and coming outside the Gibraltar. Mm. And for us, it's like a normal thing. Yeah, you go to uh, the flight uh, company and book the tickets. But how I do that? Who I need to call? And yeah. so I am now in the responsibility to, to do that. But uh, yeah. it's quite fun. Like they have never like they are in the zone there in Gibraltar. They never open open minds. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, like that. So yeah, I think everyone is. They think this is very funny think that we are Swedes who are coming and like we we don't want to come over and say do like this do like this do like this we want to have new mindset and they they're quite happy with that also yeah yeah super interesting and yeah. um <laughs> i i work within pr so that's why i'm asking all these like pr questions but i know that i read somewhere that Mar marcus biro he's a famous uh, journalist in sweden um he uh, he was like hired for, uh, by the, by i don't think it uh, was by you, I'm, I'm not sure, but to like follow the close uh, the club closely and like write a book about <clears throat> its journey. Um, where where where's the st status there, and uh, how does it go with like um, the, the book? Well, like uh, I mean, Marcus is is uh, one of the best journalists we have, uh, and I think he knows his football. He knows uh, the touch and feel of different clubs, and and we 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 got a call. I think. Um, I don't remember how we actually got in contact with Marcus, but anyway, so uh, we had a nice chat before we before I left to uh, Gibraltar in August, and uh, he said, you know, it's good. I, can we document this? And so uh, we send him some stuff once in a while, and sometimes he's posting us on his Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, so so we have a dialogue. He's following us, uh, and he's invited to come down. And he probably will when his busy schedule has a, has a little slot. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we hope he one day will we'll document it uh, um, uh, for us in, in a kind of a book. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So so look forward to that. Super interesting. All right. And the natural goal naturally would be to finish top three, right? To qualify for the European places. Is that the goal for this season already, or is that a bit unrealistic? And yeah, when's the time frame for, for qualifying for Europe? I'll let Martin answer that one. I mean, for me and the rest of the players, of course, we want to win every game. And this is why we uh, play football. Uh, yeah. But from the board side, maybe it's top six for the first. And maybe you can continue that. But from the player side, we want to come top three and also win the cup. But, yeah. that, but that's a huge step. We come, uh, like Magnus tells us, bottom six now. Mm. And to come top three is maybe it's too high step, uh, but the ball is uh, a ball is a ball, and we <laughs> everything can happen. <laughs> everything can happen. So yeah. of course we want to. This is a, what the aim of the players. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think Martin answered good. Uh, top six is is the aim uh, this time, and more pressure on 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 myself, uh, the players, the coach. Mm. Everyone wants more now. Uh, so top six, we will be happy as a step, and then I think we're up on level three. We jump one step then, mm. uh, but it's not unrealistic that we can do top three uh, mm. because with the coach, if we get a good coach and the team comes together, mm. uh, the preseason is eight weeks. Uh, so if we get that going really, really well, we we will surprise. Uh, mm. I think we will have a hard time to beat number one, Lincoln Redims. 
but everyone else, we've been only one goal away uh, during the spring, one or two goals. Uh, but we've been close already, so uh, we, we can do it. We can do it. Final question. If you could pick one club in the world to replicate in terms of how it's run, um, which one would that be and why? Mm, that's a good one. Yeah, if you take the player perspective, <laughs> I, I, I take the owner perspective. Um, or the opposite. Maybe. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I think um, a well-run club, uh, I mean, that that's uh, it's a given at the moment. Brentford is, is, a, is a good one. They have a good um, solid base of... Uh, getting uh, the most out of the squad and the, the coaches and the organization uh, they've been promoting themselves uh, they're solid they have a quite interesting structure uh, and so on so I, I would say brentford but i also want to say as, as a scandinavian role model it's going to be broma pojkarna because the, if you look on how many talents they actually produce in, it's in, crazy yeah. it's crazy and i think our national team at the moment has four or five players yes. or maybe maybe six so um they do something really right and of course we we want to see how how far we can go and how quick we can go to be be using that role model uh, we, we're never going to catch them uh, never ever but we're going to try to be as close as possible yeah interesting mm -hmm. i think uh, all the players should say like maybe real madrid or barcelona or something <laughs> because they play so good football but i should say maybe another top team in premier league who was like 10 15 years ago uh, manchester united Hard-working club with young players like uh, Paul Scholes, Ryan Giggs, Roy Keane before when they was from the academy and running up to the center squad. I would say Manchester United and also, of course, uh, That's my club. this is your club. Yeah. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> and actually also like Broma Polkana, who I've been there for many years and see how they progress uh, developing young kids, young players to take the final step up to the senior squad. Uh, and right now, like Magnus told you, it's six players in the national team of Sweden who have who have been from Bromo Pokana from like 10 years old up to the old senior squad. Uh, so I think Bromo Pokana and the play from the players, but also like to winning titles and cups and everything is Manchester United because we want to win titles in the future. Good answers. <laughs> really good answers. <laughs> and uh, that was actually everything from us, Shual, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to say one thing. I love yeah. the shirt. Oh, you love it? Yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's your kit. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, a, it's a really cool kit, yeah. actually. And that, that's, that's like the lighthouse in there. Yeah. The, yeah. You have one like in Gibraltar, right? It's called Europa Point also. Yeah, the Europa Point is actually the last uh, southern point of Europe that oh, next okay. to next continent in Africa. Mm -hmm. So if you stand on the lighthouse, you were at the end of Europe, and then you overview Morocco and, and uh, those countries. That's really cool. And it's so, called Europa Point also. It is, huh? yeah. So that's yeah, quite that's cool. A, yeah. That's a bit yeah. behind the name. <laughs> Super interesting. Yeah, yeah. Actually, after this episode, I felt like we, man, we gotta go down. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> when, when your season is starting in October, yeah. I think we, we, we should go down. Yeah, please watch a few games. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because no, it's, it's, uh, it's actually a very good time, and, uh, yeah. and uh, everyone is invited to come, and uh, we take care of every visitor that comes yeah. from Scandinavia. So yeah. Just email us on on uh, on um, our homepage. Uh, you find the address. So yeah, yeah, You're welcome. Yeah, really cool. You 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 want some sun back in the October? Too, October, so. yeah. yeah, November, so, December. So, so why not? So, yeah. you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but mine is morning. It was super nice to have you here. Hope you enjoyed. Yeah. Uh, to be on the podcast. That was great. Um, Thank you. And to all the followers, uh, you can see Europe Point Games uh, on it's Gibraltar FC uh, FA, their YouTube, right? Where yeah. You can see all the games. Yeah. For free. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's actually you, you tap in Europa Point uh, and YouTube. And, yeah. And then you're, you're on and you can find the games. Yeah. Super nice. So you yeah. should make sure, the listeners, make sure to see a game uh, or we more games, not only one. <laughs> next season. And, uh, yeah, next season. And also make sure to follow Europa Point on Instagram and Facebook. It's Europa Point FC in one word, right? Correct. Yes. Um, and as we, we said, it was a pleasure having you on. And thank you, uh, thank you for coming. And uh, to all our listeners, uh, make sure to, to follow us and um, because we'll keep up the good work. Yeah. <laughs> Have a nice one. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye, bye, bye. guys.